big fan of Full Tilt. Uh, it was an amazing group. I have a trivia question for you. On the internet, on YouTube, there's a version of Janis Joplin solo playing me and Bobby McGee at Thread Guilds. Yeah. I wonder if that was done before or after the album was tracked. Well, um, I don't know. Of course, I, I watched that. You sent me the link on that, and of course, somebody has, has put that soundtrack over a totally different performance. I think it was a Dick Cavett show performance, or maybe it was... Uh, uh, I was in the background... Uh, but it was some live performance of, it might have been from the Festival Express. Oh, so it might not, no, I think it was at Thread Guilds because she was friendly with the owner and he might have run a soundboard. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe it was Festival Express. That's what the- No, no, the sound, I, I do believe you're correct uh, that it was. Uh, but uh, I have no idea who the musicians were on it and I know that the video is not the same. Right, right, that someone just slapped together video images because all they had was audio. Right, they, they could have done a slideshow, who knows, I mean, if they wanted to, but that's what they chose to put on it. And there was complaints from a bunch of people saying, how come it doesn't line up? Well, you know, it's totally different, that's all, that's why. What, what I'm doing is I'm gonna download it onto DVD because, you know, YouTube will eventually yank it, and it really is rare. Yeah, yeah, get that flash recorder going. Yeah. Um, John, what, are you still playing on the weekends? I am. I have never stopped playing. So you play relentlessly. Well, it's slowed down the last couple of years. Um, we, were, we were doing a, a house job in London, Ontario, for three or four years every Saturday afternoon, and it really kept our hands in shape and kept us on top of our game. But now it's slowed down a little bit. Uh, that that uh, house gig is over, and... Um, and now I think they're coming by about every three to four weeks, the jobs now. Oh, so you still play around London? I haven't, haven't since those house gigs uh, went, went under. Oh, so there's different venues you play? Yeah, uh, different venues. There's a couple of, uh, couple of spots here in Stratford, Ontario, where I'm from, and uh, we do play there. And, uh, and, and then there's the, the odd out-of-town thing. But uh, we're not really pursuing it all that strongly these days. Everybody has their own lives and, uh, and their own other things to do. And, but uh, we, we do keep our hand in, and we, uh, if there isn't a, a job for three or four weeks, we definitely get together for an evening or two and run through some tunes. It's just fun. And what's the name of the group? Plum Loco. Say that again? Plum Loco. P-L-U-M? Yeah, P-L-U-M-L-O-C-O. Plum Loco. Yeah, it's uh, what Gabby Hayes called uh, Roy Rogers when he, when he wanted to do something crazy. He says, you're a plum loco. Well, you know what I would love to do? I would love to bring Marty Ballin of the Jefferson Airplane up to your area to do some concerts and have your plum loco open. That'd be great. Because I work with Marty, and uh, we just got him a brand new agency, a big agency to book him worldwide. Hmm. And we're doing the entire Surrealistic Pillow album which is uh, the second Jefferson Airplane album with Somebody to Love, White Rabbit, today. So uh, did you ever play, oh, sure, you played on stage with Marty at Woodstock. Maybe not the same day. Uh, would, that, would that be Woodstock 69 you're talking about? Right, Jefferson Airplane played one of the days. I'm not sure if it was 15, 16, or 17. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I was only there for one day, and, and there was a lot of bands on, so... Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I was sort of focused on our particular show. I, I know that uh, before we went on at Woodstock 69, uh, Credence was playing. I remember watching them uh, from 180 degrees uh, from the front, <laughs> sort of just watching the back of their amps and as, we, as we were setting up. And, and, of course, they rotated the stage, and uh, we started playing, and uh, Credence tore down. You know, what's really strange is Credence wasn't on the original LP. Um, Neither was Janice. Right, but Janice was so larger than life, you always knew Janice and Woodstock. Credence never got the cachet Janice got, even though they both weren't on the live album. The five live albums, uh, Woodstock 1 or 2. Well, I think some of it might have been contractual. I, 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 ah. I don't think they got all their ducks in, in order uh, before the... 
the concert, and um, I think there was some problems later with uh, with rights, hassling over uh, rights and percentages or whatever. I, I really don't know, but uh, that was my understanding that some of those performances didn't hit the streets on the original movie, either because the movie the movie would was going to last 90 minutes probably, and, and the it was uh, three days worth of entertainment. They had to pick and choose what they wanted to put on. But Janice was conspicuously missing from from the whole thing. I, I uh, I've heard several different um, theories as to why that was. But uh, I'm glad that eventually it did come out. You know, somebody sent me some video of Woodstock anonymously. I don't know who sent it to me, but it was a videotape of three songs from Woodstock from a camera angle that I've never seen before. Nice. It, it, it's really close up. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, but it's never appeared in film that, I, that I've seen. Transfer it to DVD and save it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. It's, it's, uh, it's still on VHS. Always transfer the stuff. You don't want it to deteriorate. I know. The, those, those tapes do, don't they? A good friend of mine... Um, sent us the German telecast from, I think I sent you a DVD of that, what I think it was 41369 performance in Germany. Um, was that you or that was, might have been Sam, April in 69, right? I didn't play Europe with Janice. Yeah, okay. No. So that was Sam. Right, I came in about halfway through the, um, the Cosmic Blues experience, uh, which lasted approximately one year, a little less than a year. Uh, but uh, to me, that was a great band. I mean, I I really enjoyed the horns and and, uh, and the organ, Richard Kermode on organ and and Snooky on on baritone and and Louis Gasca on trump, trumpet and um, and Terry Clemens on on tenor. That that to me was a good band. And uh, I tell you, I stepped into a situation that um, was just a pure joy to play along with because. When you play in a band with horns, you have to play a lot less. You, you play a different role. You, you sort of, somebody coined the term ensemble playing. Sure. Um, it, it was a, it was a joy to fit right in with that because there, there was a piano you had to leave room for, and and you just sort of play am, amongst everybody else. You don't. It's not like a guitar, bass, and drums trio where the guitar has to do all, everything. You know, like Hendrix or the Cream or something like this. This was a real joy and. Uh, to hear those uh, those horn parts, like I have a a favorite video that's that's on YouTube right now, and, and uh, uh, it's um, it was from a, a performance that we did um, on NBC. I think it was um, I don't remember the name of the show now, Rocket or something like that. It's hosted by uh, uh, David Steinberg. Oh, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, and we do uh, we do try, and we do. Um, Maybe. She does a tremendous job on Maybe. And there you can really hear the horns and what they can do. It was a enjoyable band. And then, and then when she finally did um, decide to make a change, she turned everybody loose except for me and Brad Campbell, the bass player, who is also uh, another Canadian from down the road here, and um, who I see fairly often. And uh, she retained the two of us to go back to California and form Full Tilt. So uh, I got two different views on uh, on Janice's career in two different bands. Both and, Brad and I did. And, and you and Sam are really the only two people in Brad because uh, Sam was, of course, in Big Brother and then full uh, Cosmic Blues. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, he did play the, in two bands, right? And uh, and then with Brad and uh, and and I, we did the the other two bands uh, with uh, Cosmic Blues in common. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, um, I look back on those, on those days very fondly about, uh, about all the people I worked with. And uh, if they ever invent a time machine, I'd like to go back. <laughs> well, I was 15, 16 at the time, 17. I would love to go back and, uh, and experience what you people experienced, you know? Right. I, I, when I'm looking... Uh, I look back on things. I, I think, well, you know, it's uh, this, it was just so fortunate uh, for me to be in the in the right place at the right time to be involved in that. Because uh, and and 
another thing is I, I didn't really realize that Woodstock was going to be the, the iconic event that it, that it turned out to be. I mean, I had played a, uh, at least one job with Janice, uh, two jobs with Janice before that, and uh, they uh, they were fairly big venues. Like it was um, Forest Hills, and I believe there was a place in Maryland. Uh, that was the first job in Maryland that, that Sam wasn't around. And um, but the, the, we, we were rehearsing up in Woodstock, New York, and uh, the the road crew kept coming back from the site, going, "It's getting bigger, John. It's getting bigger. You won't believe it." And, and I, I, to me, uh, if you can't see past the first five rows, it doesn't mean anything whether there's a, a half a million people out there or not. I mean, we played at night, and, and I couldn't really see beyond the first five or ten rows of people standing there. So I was, as far as I was concerned, it, it was just as good as playing to a, a small little in, intimate audience, you know. But uh, there was just so much going on that... Uh, I had to be on my toes. I had to keep track of what key we're going to be in. I had to watch Janice for counting the songs in or whoever was going to be counting. And uh, I, I just had to, to more or less stay on track. And uh, you can only look out of the audience for so long, and then you've got to look back and, and take care of business and do your job. So uh, the, the most important thing to me was that I didn't play anything, play anything drastically wrong. And, but, um like it really was uh, the the third job I had played with Janice, and uh, I really wasn't totally sure of what I was supposed to be doing. But uh, I had practiced a lot on my own, and with rehearsals with the band, and I made a lot of notes and uh, tried to keep track of what I had to do, and um, and I reviewed that constantly up until that point. But you know, uh, there's something I, I learned over the years is that stage fright. Stage fright doesn't set in unless you don't feel prepared. And um, I, I didn't have stage fright at, at, at Woodstock uh, because um, I figured I, I, would, I, I would go with my experience and uh, what I had managed to assume, and, and I just hoped everything came, went for the best, came off for the best, and then I just had fun. And I just uh, did what... I'd always tried to do was just play well. So, um, and, and in retrospect, I guess it was okay, you know. I'm holding up the poster from the Woodstock experience with uh, people, August 15th to 18th, 1969. Oh, yeah. And then there's a nice picture of Janice, uh, beautiful red picture of Janice on the poster. Oh. Uh, I hope Sony sent you the Pearl Deluxe with the uh, bonus disc. I, I believe they did, yes. That's got Festival Express music on it, which is tremendous to have a full live album, um, unlike the um, Janis Joplin in concert, which had half of Big Brother and half of Full Tilt. Uh, I put out the back. This is a, a full, tilt, full Tilt Boogie live album, which is in the Pearl Deluxe, it's called. Oh, yeah. They're taken from some uh, live shows, are they? Yeah, Tell Mama, Half Moon, Move Over, Maybe, Summertime, Little Girl Blue. Mm. Um, well, uh, just to interrupt you for a second, there was some songs that Janice carried through various bands. Right. And then others, others she dropped. Like one that was retained all the way through was Peace of My Heart. I, she did that with Big Brother. She did that with the, 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 the following two bands, too. And uh, But then... Others like say uh, maybe now maybe Jerry Ragavoy's maybe that was done with Cosmic Blues and she carried through that to full tilt and uh, but then then there was others that she didn't do with full tilt like um, well there was one um, a try was another one that she uh, she started doing in uh, Cosmic Blues and then carried through to full tilt. But get it while you can. That was one that was brand new to Full Tilt. And uh, speaking of Jerry Ragavoy, I was amazed when I took a, a closer look at his writing credits. Oh, yeah. That there was, uh, Janice did no less than five of his songs. She loved Ragavoy. Mm hmm. And uh, Ragavoy just passed away, unfortunately, a month ago. Yeah. But yeah, I wish I'd have met him. Did you meet Chip Taylor, who co-wrote Try? 
No, I didn't. Chip Taylor wrote Wild Thing. So pairing up Chip Taylor and Jerry Ragavoy is really unique. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wild Thing. Yeah. Uh... He also wrote Angel of the Morning from Merrily Rush. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, um, the, it still is so vivid in my mind, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the moments of, of Woodstock. I remember uh, it, it's, uh, I could be right back there right now in my mind in some of, the, some of these situations that we're in. You know, that seems to be how uh, our memory works, is that uh, we can't remember every single second of what went by. But there are those moments that are absolutely vivid, and you can be right back there again, so without any doubt that that's the way it really was. And um, I look back very fondly on those Woodstock days. I, I really like the, the photographs, of the overhead photographs of the site. And, and um, I, I did get, I got a chance to go back to, uh, to Woodstock for uh, the Woodstock 94 concert. With Aerosmith? I, well, I, I, I was on the, I went to the secondary stage and caught the band and, um, and uh, Primus. And, um, but in both, both situations, I never got to go out into the audience. Huh. And with the, uh, I, I got to go in through, uh, be, be es escorted in, in the backstage area at Woodstock 94. But I was told, uh, don't go out into the audience because I didn't actually have a physical pass. So uh, I might not have gotten back to get back on the bus again. So I didn't go out then. And then John Cook gave us strict orders when we were at Woodstock 69 that nobody goes out into the audience because we want to make sure we have a band when it comes time to go on. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that could, have very been, could quite have been very possible that we couldn't have gotten back in.